Alright guys, how's it going? It's the East Banglers. We're out here. We're out here. We're going to talk about something today we've done before. We're going to talk about a lake. We're going to break it down. We're going to talk about Jenkinson Lake. We're going to talk about springtime bass fishing at Jenkinson Lake, aka Sly Park, located in California, um, Pollock, Pollock, Pollock Pines. I'm sorry, I don't say it right. Um, but basically, um, we're going to talk about my top 10 baits that I throw the 10 baits, you know, uh, if, if I, you know, have the boat out or something, uh, which sometimes on occasion I do, uh, you know, I have the option to have 12 rods on the deck. Uh, some of you guys go crazier and even have, you know, 16, 18, 24 rods, depending on how big, big your bass boat is, depending on, I don't know, how big your storage lockers on are and how many rods you have. Um, for me personally, uh, I, I, uh, I want to talk about these top 10 baits because this is going to help you guys catch more fish, you know, whether you're out there for fun fishing, whether you're out there seriously fishing, either way this is going to help you catch more fish and it's consistent so in the springtime you know March April May these are the months we're talking about all right so let's talk about the worm now we're talking about artificial plastic worms here not night crawlers that you you know buy at the store um, worms work really well you know, wacky rigging the Senko in the four inch size works. Five inch seems to get a lot less bites. Um, you know, anything bigger than that, you're wasting your time. Um, because the majority of the fish in the lake are smallmouth and spotted bass. So that profile is just a bit too large. There are some largemouth, and they get active, you know, in May and June, um, even early July in Jenkinson Lake. And that's when. You know, you start gearing towards more of a largemouth bite, um, in my personal experience there. So, um, you know, the worms, you know, you can throw robo worms, you know, four and a half inch robo worms. I've caught a few fish, curly tail, straight tail, um, you know, you know, a few fish, um, you know, but, uh, you know, for the most part, um, I'm a big fan of the... Uh, four inch Senko. I like to drop shot that four inch Senko. I've caught a lot of fish drop shotting that Senko. That's pretty much what I do. Um, you know, that's one of my, you know, go to drop shot baits is a four inch Senko. Um, now, as far as worms go, you know, I mean, there's really not too many on the market that I like to use there except what I mentioned. Um, you know, there's. I'm trying to think here. Uh, there's probably like some three inch leeches that are very similar to the worm, uh, four inch leeches that are very similar to the worms um, that I'm throwing. And I, I've done well on leeches there. Um, so, you know, keep that in mind. But as far as colors, guys, you know, just kind of bland natural colors, you know, greens and like you know pumpkins and just basic your your basic uh, normal um, colors that really look natural in clear water um, sometimes you can get away with a uh, you know like a shad colored worm or um, basically like a watermelon black and red flake you know you can get away with like f flakes in the worms I've done quite well having a little bit of you know red flake black flake gold flake you know um, for sure those three flake you know those three have been productive for me so 
we're done talking about worms. Um, we're done. You know, drop shot and worms. I like to drop shot, but there's all kinds of baits you can drop shot. Um, you know, but four inch Sankos, you know, uh, natural colors. Um, so second thing, second bait would have to be a tube. A tube works phenomenal there. Anything from one eighth ounce all the way to three eighth ounce, you know, if you need to get deeper, faster, but you know, depending on what you're doing, I mean, you know, you can hop it, you can slow drag it, you know, it's great. You know, the water's still cold, but it's warming up, the fish are getting active, and this bait just kind of uh, does really well here. Blue, black, um, you know, pretty much purple. Uh, those are my favorite three colors. Um, I like to throw them in the three or the four inch size, you know, three, four inch tubes. Um, I fish them slow. I fish them, you know, really slow. So that pretty much covers the tubes. The next, the next bait I want to talk about is a bit weird. Um, crawfish, you know, I want to talk about, you know, art, you know, jigging a pig. Um, you know, for the most part, you know, throwing a, a trailer on there, I'll throw like a Gary Yamamoto double tail grub, Strike King Rage Tail. Um, craw, or maybe a, a zoom chunk, or a, a like a grande bass uh, craw, or I, I mean I got I got all kinds. I, I mean maybe a sweet beaver has always been good to me on the as a trailer on a jig, but um, <clears throat> jigs in general, um, you're gonna want to go smaller. You're gonna want to go like really small so pretty much like oh gosh quarter ounce jigs to three eighth ounce jigs you don't want to go any bigger than three eighth ounce size uh, and you just want a small compact trailer whatever you're doing small compact very important um, you know I don't really uh, you know weed guards you know you can use them but you're still gonna get stuck in the rocks so that's gonna be a bummer you know, my, my favorite color for craws are natural colors. So browns, tans, reds, um, you know, black and blue maybe, stuff like that. So, next we're going to talk about jerk baits. When it comes to jerk baits at Jenkinson Lake, what I like to do is I like to go with the smaller jerk baits. So we're talking like quarter ounce to three eighth ounce, very small profile, somewhere in that like three and a half to. Now I've caught some bigger fish using some larger Mega Bass 110 Vision 110s um, in shad colors, uh, and you know just like the the bites you you're not getting very many you're getting just very 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 just almost very few quality fish though uh, so for the most of the part I'm fishing those three to four inch three and a half to four inch um, you know I'm, you know shallow mid depth deeper diving jerk baits in shad colors they work really well um, a lot of times you know fishing them aggressive is kind of key but you know it's kind of hard because you know they really do well around like timber and stuff like that and lay down bushes trees and they get snagged up constantly it's big pain in the butt all right so all right guys so when you got those rainy days those overcast days spinner baits believe it or not in the quarter ounce to the three eighth ounce size actually work at Jenkinson Lake now I've caught them I I had one epic day um, caught roughly like 13 bass I think it was 13 bass um, in like four or five hours bank fishing on spinner baits and it was raining overcast and it was like April mid-April so I mean, spinner baits work, and and the, and for the most part, white spinner baits are the best. You know, just white 
and sometimes some other colors mixed in, but white's that dominant color there. And, uh, you know, it's just uh, one of those baits that I'll only throw under those conditions, or maybe if there's like really heavy wind and, you know, the water is just really uh, getting pushed hard, you know, maybe uh, that spinner bait sometimes uh, kind of calls fish up. But other than those situations, I don't really throw a spinner bait on at all at Jenkinson Lake. And I do not fish a spinner bait except in springtime at Jenkinson Lake. That's the only time I've done well on it. Not summer, not fall, not winter. All right, guys. So now we're going to talk about flu. I mean, I'm. So All right, guys. So now we're going to talk about swim baits. Swim baits are, um, you know, a really good bait. Uh, I, I in the springtime you can get away with Texas rigging a weightless fluke, uh, four to six inch in length, and you can jerk that thing around and you can just kill the spotted bass. Um, when they're, you know, in their pre-spawn, spawn, and even post-spawn stage, um, right around the banks, right by the marina. I mean, you can do really well in other places around the lake. They just love it. I mean, fish it tight to cover, Texas rig it weightless, does really well. I fished it weighted deeper. I do not, you know, have any success. It's only in that situation, um, springtime, Pre-spawn, spawn, post-spawn, fish are aggressive. Primarily, you're going to get those spotted bass. And there's some quality spotted bass in Jenkinson Lake, guys. Now, another bait that really just kills is a Kitek. You know, like a fat swing impact, a 3.8, 4.3... You know, um, you throw that out there, um, that bait can do really well. I mean, caught a lot of largemouth spotted bass and some smallmouth on that bait. Uh, usually, it's always a quality fish. It's like two and a half, three pounds or up when you're catching fish on that bait. Um, you know, and uh, you got to stay patient. got to put your time in. I like shad colors once again. You know, I like... Um, you know, electric shad, for example, is really good. All right, guys. So next I want to talk about lipless crankbaits. Now, as far as fish and lake, like lipless crankbaits at, at Jenkinson Lake, not much like luck, um, you know, doing anything except pretty much burning those um, across coves and um, points. I, I really haven't had any luck doing anything else with them. Um, and, uh, you know, pretty much in shad patterns or crawfish patterns is all I will throw when it comes to the lipless crankbaits. I try to go small, like 3 8 ounce is a good size crank, uh, lipless crankbait to throw. Um, it's a good search bait, so if you're having trouble finding the fish, but um, like I said, coves, across coves, on the points. Alright guys, so now we're going to talk about the square bill, square bill crankbait. The square bill crankbait can be pretty productive at times. I like to fish it on overcast rainy days, kind of like when I'm fishing topwater. I like those, uh, or I like to fish it when the wind is really going you know, 15 to 30 mile per hour winds, get on a point, get on some major drop off or something like that and just see what happens. I've done what really pretty well. Um, white and any other kind of color you can imagine, but white has to be in it. It seems like um, crankbaits, springtime, a little bit of summertime crankbait fishing and then that it just dies down after that. Um, we're going to talk about, we got a couple more baits, so we're going to talk about them right now. Um, and one of those baits is topwater. Everybody asks me, I've had a lot of people ask me about topwater, 
fishing at Jenkinson Lake, what would you recommend? It's very simple. Walk the dog baits and poppers. Silver, shad color, bone color, uh, you know, shad colored, bone colored, um, you know, bait fish type of uh, profiles is what you want um, for your top water baits. And poppers, walk the dog baits, you know, um, they, they, they do they do really well um, you're gonna sometimes run into some fish especially summer um, end of summer early fall you can run into you know a bunch of fish you know in just a few minutes and uh, that's always fun running into like five to eight fish within uh, you know 15 minutes it's just um you know, usually I ha uh, the big the bigger fish seem to elude me when I'm fishing top water there. I'm not sure why, but um, that's my experience with top water at Jenkinson Lake. And the last thing we're going to talk about is creature baits. We're going to talk about creature baits because if you Texas rig or Carolina rig a creature bait, Carolina rig, you know, you know, if you want to cover a lot of water, and Texas rig, if you know you want to basically accurately flip your bait or cast your bait into an area tight probably likely to cover structure and whatnot what we are looking at here is brush hogs brush hogs do really good at Jenkinson Lake I would say if there was a bait you know my favorite bait uh, creature bait without a doubt the brush hog by zoom um, I don't even use any of the brands. I mean, they've got a couple different sizes. They all work. I stick with the regular size. It's like five inches. And then I think I have another size. It's like a mini lizard, and that's like four inches. And I'll, like, I'll start big, and if I don't get bit big, I'll just go to the four inch. And then, you know, a lot of times I don't have to go to the four inch. It's just that, um, you know, sometimes these fish get finicky. But... Keep this in mind, guys, all this information relative. I have hit this lake extremely hard. I've put hours in beyond hours, and I can tell you that you will catch more fish following these tips about that lake, Jenkinson Lake, lo you know, located in California. That That's a nice little lake. It's uh, not very long. It's like almost three miles long. You know, it's not very wide for the most part of it, but half of it's, you know, fairly wide. But it's, you know, it gets a lot of pressure right now. Uh, you know, the lake sh is, should be opening very soon. And uh, we should be able to get on at least a month, maybe even five weeks of this spring bite. Um, and the lake should fish really well. Um Hope you guys find this information good. I personally am giving up, you know, some real secrets here. Um, you know, uh, a lot of people go to Jenkinson Lake and they fish baits that are much too large. The minute your bait is five and a half inches or larger, your bait is too large. Um, you know, you can throw a trout swim bait and that's one thing. There are big fish in that lake that'll take that and there's max that might take it in the spring but other than that I would not uh, be fishing baits over five and a half inches in general spring summer winter fall it's just it's not a good idea these fish for the most part are not very big you know the odds of you getting a large fish are not you know like very high so you know you've got to present baits that are going to be more um, more that more appropriate for the size of the average fish um, but I hope this helps like I said guys you know just trying to help you guys get on more fish uh, catch and release can't stress it enough catch and release please everything everything when it comes to these bass um, there's a couple places you might go and, you know, take a bass or two, and that's okay. Jenkinson Lake is not one of those places. These smaller fisheries need to be protected, guys. All right, thanks for listening. Stay in tuned. Uh, 
Uh, we're going to have some more episodes like this on a few lakes. We're just going to break down lakes, talk about them, talk about my favorite baits, things that have been productive. And we're not talking about productive or consistent for a short period or a moderate period. We're talking about years and years and years, things that just work and work and work.